everybody and welcome back to another video on the channel so today we're going to be talking about css padding i just want to go back and brush up on all the other um coding stuff i mentioned on my channel so this time it's going to be something about css um java videos will be coming soon on the channel so be sure to stay tuned but today we're going to be talking about css padding so we use padding to generate space around an element's content content in css is essentially the html on the file in the examples I'm going to do throughout the video, this is just essentially a sentence or two. Um, so that's pretty much it. In CSS, we have full control over the padding. We decide um, what happens. We get to control everything. So it's not like um, they do it for you. We have control over it. Um, just to review, every CSS element has a property and a value. Um, and they're separated by a semicolon. I mean, they're separated by colon, my bad. So there's going to be a property like that, and there's going to be a value. And it always has to end in a semicolon. The reason why we end in a semicolon is because the next statement is usually going to be a new statement. So it's essentially, that semicolon is essentially representing that that statement is over and we're starting something new. So in CSS padding specifically, there are four properties because there are four sides. So there's the padding top for the top side, padding bottom for the bottom side, padding left for the left side, and padding right for the right side. As you can see, the padding property name corresponds with the side of the padding. So after we add the properties, you then need to add a value to the properties. Um, that can be done in three ways. A length, which can be in pixels or centimeters. A percentage, we can specify the padding of the width of the element. Or an inherit, which specifies the padding that comes from the parent element. The last two I won't go over too much because I only do the first one. The other two you can do if you want to, but I personally just recommend go ahead and do the first one because it's the least confusing and I don't want to complicate it too much for you. So let's go ahead and start with our file. So first, obviously what you want to do is you want to make a .html file. Um, I'm doing a dot, um, I don't do a dot .css because in this case I want to, um, I want to do CSS with HTML, so I, want, I like to do them together, I guess you can call it. If you're going to do a CSS, then you have to import it with it using um, a script command and something like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an HTML file and include CSS inside because um, I'm going to do CSS within it. So let's go ahead and start with a doc type HTML. And then after that, we need to nest our HTML. Let's nest our head. This is all the syntax. And then after that, we can then start with our style. So this is where we're going to put our CSS inside. So we're going to use the div element. And the div element is essentially going to give our CSS a sort of class. So uh, just for a review, what this div element is going to do is that anytime we use the div tag for like our content, it's going to apply all the stuff I put inside this div, and it's going to apply that to the content. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a border. Um, I did mention a video about borders. I'll link it in the end of the video for y'all to watch, or I'll probably link it in the description. I doubt I'll do it in the, end of the video, so be sure to check out the description because I will do that. So I'm going to make the border one pixel, and I'm going to make a solid black. I, um, once again, um, if you don't know what this is, then you probably haven't watched the border video. And the border video kind of mentioned what this stuff does, so go ahead and check that out. Um, that will kind of tell you how this works, and that just goes more in depth about that. So I just want to do a small border, one pixel. It's going to be like really bluff. Not bluff, but it's like short, I guess you can say. And then I'm going to do a background color. Don't like make your background color too bright, like yellow or bright red. Um, red's my favorite color. But since red is just too bright and it's hard for me to see my text, I'm just going to go ahead and do something like coral, which is kind of like, it's a mix of red and orange. After that, we can go ahead and do our padding properties. So I'm going to say padding top. And then let's make that 60 pixels. Um, uh, and then padding bottom. Let's also make that 60 pixels. I'm just going to make it short and simple by just making all of them the same. I think it goes left. Oh, it goes top right and bo bottom left. That's how it works. Be sure to memorize that order. That order is extremely important. 
you'll you'll probably know why later in this video why the why that order is important but top right bottom left it's extremely important to memorize it's bottom not left 60 pixels oh whoops my bad let's make that 60 pixels and then let's make that left which is 60 pixels that order is really important so make sure it's on the top of your head as much as possible after we got our head we can just go ahead and make a body and then import our content all your content goes inside the body no exceptions so let's go ahead and add our content with the div tag um, if you didn't add, if you add, if you added like a paragraph or something, then make sure you put your content in the paragraph instead of div. I'm just doing it in the div tag because I already did my CSS under that. So whatever this, the selector, this is called a selector. Um, I did a video on this also, so I'll probably link all this in the description. I'll probably link the whole playlist. So whichever one you want, you can go ahead and click on that and you can watch it. But this is the selector. So whenever I, um, Whenever I kind of um, source this element, then whatever I put inside, the this is going to apply. So once again, just for that. So I'm just going to um, state what this does. All padding lengths are 60 pixels. Just like that. I think we're good to go from there. So let's go ahead and reload it. So here, what the browser is going to show us is that it's going to show us our small border that's black. It's going to show us our coral color. And then it's going to show us um, our length. You may be asking um, why if it's not a square because they're all equal. Keep in mind that I'm doing it in pixels, so pixels is going to change. So this is what it's going to do. All padding lengths are 60 pixels. So um, there's obviously going to be a shorter way to do this, and this is called the padding shorthand property. So instead of just simply doing padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left, what you can do is something called the padding shorthand property. So instead of adding all this, you can just get rid of it and then just say padding. And then what I can do from here is I can just say 60 pixels, 60 pixels, 60 pixels, 60 pixels. What this is going to do is that it's going to tell the browser what you want. This is the same thing as what I just did before. I didn't make any changes to the, um, to the measurements of the padding. So I just kept all those the same. But the reason why it said, said it's important to memorize the order of the um, paddings, the order of the sides, is because the first number is always going to be the top. The second number is always going to be the right. The third number is going to be the number on the bottom. And the fourth number is going to be the number on the left. So that's why it's really important you memorize that because... The first number is going to be on the top, second is going to be on the right, third is going to be on bottom, fourth is going to be on the left. So if I did um, 50, for example, I just did 50, 50, then that means 60 pixels would be the padding top, 50 pixels would be the padding bottom, 60, um, I mean 50 pixels would be the padding right, 60 pixels would be the padding bottom, and 50 pixels would be the padding on the left side. So I hope that kind of clears it up and makes some sense. But you don't always have to have four values. Um, you can have three. So what three is going to do is that um, instead of having it in the order of top, right, bottom, left, 60 pixels is going to be on the top. But 50 pixels is going to be on the right and the left. And then 60 pixels is going to be on the bottom. So um, whenever there's three, the second one is going, the second value is going to cover the right and the left. And then whenever there's two values, the first one will be for the top and the bottom. And the second one will be for the right and the left. I mean, yeah, the right and the left. And then when there's only one, then it's going to apply them for all the sides. So whatever I just did before, I did 60 pixels for all of them. So I can just essentially go ahead and say 60 pixels because 60 pixels just covers all the sides already. So let's just go ahead and save it and reload. Nothing's going to change because it's just the same thing as what I did. So that's just how you can make it, that's just how you can cut the code down slightly. Um, it's not going to make a big difference in your code, but it's going to cut it down significantly. So lastly, I want to cover something called the width, the width property. The width property is extremely essential because it's essentially going to um, state the width of our content and it's going to add it in pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and make my property width and then I'm going to go ahead and call it value.
I'm going to call it 300 pixels and then end it with the semicolon. Make sure you always end with the semicolon because that just shows the statement's ending and we're going to start a new statement. In this case, we're starting padding. We're starting the statement of padding. We're going to tell the value to be 60 pixels and then we're going to say semicolon because it's ending. And then that's why we just include a semicolon after every value. So with that being said, let's go ahead and save it. And this is going to make some changes to what we had. And it's going to cut it down because now the width that we're saying is going to be 60 pixels. I mean, the width is going to be 300 pixels. So it kind of cut it down a little bit. So this was a pretty short video on CSS padding. I felt like I was kind of going a little fa bit faster than usual. So if you didn't catch anything or if you had any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I will answer them as soon as possible. So, um, and let me know if you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos coming soon. And I'll see you guys next time.